So why agent-based models can be considered the future for the social sciences? What makes them so powerful? What makes them so special? And today we are going to answer this, isolating three main points which explain why agent-based models are a great tool. So good morning agents, my name is Dino Carpentras and I'm a scientist in social complexity. And in this channel we study our society using tools from complex systems, mathematical modeling, simulations and even video games. And to get to our three points of why agent-based models are so cool, we need first to start with an example. An example of two scientists having an argument within the social sciences. So let's think about these two scientists. Let's give them a name, Alice and Bob, who are really original today. So both Alice and Bob think that when people interact, they tend to become more similar. However, Bob thinks that this means that people will converge to becoming more and more similar until they are all the same. Well, Alice thinks that this process is a little more complex. So yes, people will become more and more similar, but this will generate pockets of people with the same idea, thus resulting in difference of opinion and polarization. My background is super shiny right now. It's much better. Back to Alice and Bob. So the problem here is who is right? How can we really say that one is right and the other is wrong? Because for example, to me, it really looks like Bob is right, but also there are a lot of people which claims that actually Alice is right. So what's going on here? Luckily, we have a new character, Tyler, the agent-based modeler. Anyway, Tyler says, don't worry guys, let me handle this, I will make an agent-based model. And so he makes a simulations with 100 agents, each agent having one opinion, and the opinion being a number between 0 and 10. For example, 0 is like you hate cats, and 10 is you love cats. And at each step of the simulation, we select randomly two agents. Then these agents interact and they converge to the average opinion, which is a fancy way to say that if one agent has an opinion of zero, the other agent has an opinion of 10, then they both will have an opinion of five. So what does Tyler figure out? Well, Tyler discovers that actually Bob was right and that every time he runs the simulations, all the people then converge to an opinion of pretty much five, meaning that everyone nor loves nor hates cats. Anyway, Alice doesn't look defeated at all. Indeed, she claims that the simulation doesn't represent what she was talking about. Indeed, Alice thought that when people interact, they will become more similar, but only if this makes sense, meaning that if you just mildly like dogs and I mildly don't like them, then probably we will converge to the average opinion of not liking, not disliking them. But if I love dogs and you hate dogs, then nothing will happen because our opinion is so far apart that nothing meaningful can happen. So what happens now? Well, Taylor repeats the simulation with the new configuration from Alice and he discovers something really, really interesting, which is sometimes Alice is right and sometimes Bob is right. And if we want to stick with this example, we might go on because they might still have some other ideas to test, some other things to explore. But I think for now is fine. I think we already collected enough information to jump to our three main points. So why are agent-based models so powerful for the social sciences? Point number one, the invisible becomes visible. What does it mean? Have you noticed that Alice's idea was different from Bob's one, but we didn't really realize it at the beginning. This was because Alice has a hidden opinion, a kind of idea which was not explicit at the beginning. At least it was not explicit for us, but maybe it was really explicit for her and for all the other people which were following Alice. And yes, technically we could force the entire discussion to be extremely explicit. But the problem is that when we speak, we really rely on a lot of hidden content. So for example, if I see a friend of mine with a really sad face, I can just ask him like, what happened to you? And I immediately know that I'm saying something like, hey, I can see from your face that you're really sad. So what made you so sad? And the problem is that I'm also used to not think about all of this. I'm really used to say just, 
what happened. Well, when using a computer, computers are so stupid they don't understand anything from the context. You really need to be explicit about everything. And this is kind of bad for whoever is working on artificial intelligence, because then they really need to figure out how to make a computer aware of the context, the context that is natural for us human beings. But on the contrary, for agent-based models and for science in general is amazing because then we need to be explicit. We have to tell all the hidden hypotheses of our model. For example, did you notice that we were considering opinion as a number between zero and 10? It was not explicit at the beginning. Point number two, together with making everything explicit, we also make it falsifiable, which is just pretty much the basic of science. Indeed, in science, one of the big fight is to make everything testable or to say in a more scientific way, falsifiable. This means that if you have an hypothesis, for example, that the pink unicorn exists, then there is a way to test this hypothesis, to really say that either I'm right or I'm wrong. I know this is an extremely superficial definition, but just take it like this for now. Point number three, Actually, all of these make us go farther. We don't just stop to the discussion, to discussing actually who is right and who is wrong, but we figure out that there are so many other parameters. For example, really opinion should be represented just as a single number. What happens if people interact in more than two? Maybe they interact in a group of three people or five or 10 or 100. Should we just use the average between their opinion or should we use another mathematical function? And we can keep going on and on. And this might look like a bad thing because at the beginning it looks like we were starting with just one question and now we have tons of questions. Is that bad? This is actually the core of science because we need to figure out what we don't know and what we need to explore. Just imagine at the beginning of quantum mechanics. What if people would have said something like, oh, this is too complex, just let's look for something simple. So actually having all this bunch of questions is finally really, really good because it allows us to go farther, to discover new things. I know I said there were only three points, but just for today, you have one extra for free. Agent-based models allows you to make a simulation of society. And yes, we cannot still do anything like this. We are still too far. But in the near future, we should be able to simulate our society. And unfortunately, history is full of ideas of different policies that were designed for good, but they end up doing worse. So just imagine that before running one policy, you can simulate and see which is the best policy, the ones that can backfire and the ones that instead will bring us to the desired effect. So these are really the points which I think can make clear why we are so much interested in agent-based modeling. And I know some people here will come and say, ah, no, actually agent-based models is bad, social sciences are good, and just hear me out here. I'm not saying that there is a competition between the social sciences and agent-based models. Agent-based modeling is a tool of the social sciences, just like mathematics is a tool employed by physics. So you won't say something like physics is good and mathematics is bad or vice versa. They're just two fields which are really interconnected and one is pretty much a tool used by the other. So please don't take this wrong. Also, let me know in the comments what do you think about agent-based models and also what do you want to hear next? Because this channel is about social complexity, so we can explore agent-based models, we can explore networks, we can explore so many things. And you guys are really helping me out in deciding actually what to do next, because actually it depends on what you are interested in. So if you want more of this, just subscribe. I have every new video every Monday. And that's it. Have a great day and have fun.